Hello, my friend. I'm Julie Reisler. I'm the host of the USU podcast, and I am so grateful to be here with you. And I'm really, really excited about this conversation that we're going to have together today. I The topic that I want to share with you and that I feel has been something that has been such a help for me in my life and growing my spiritual connection, my connection to my intuition, and knowing how to make decisions when my brain is in overactive hyperthinking in that processing of kind of analysis paralysis. What's helped me so much is learning how to trust my intuition and follow the signs. So if you are someone who would like to learn how to follow the signs and to trust your inner guidance, this episode is for you. And I also want to share, make sure that you listen all the way to the end because I'm going to be doing a little bit of intuitive guidance for you, um, some messages that I feel divinely inspired to share. I am really excited. This has been something that I've been doing for a while, um, but I'm certainly coming out of the spiritual closet a little bit more these days and allowing myself to share these gifts because A, I've just been getting so much of your feedback. Thank you so much that the intuitive guidance messages that I've done in the past have been really helpful and have helped with getting more clarity and healing and feeling more heart-centered. So again, always let me know your feedback. I hope that this adds so much um, clarity and joy and connection for you in your life. So, all right, let's get started. I really want to talk today about how to follow the signs and what does that even mean? So first and foremost, just to kind of level set is, I know if you're here, like attracts like, we are all on the same team. We are all here. You're here because I'm guessing you're a change maker, a light worker, a spiritual seeker. Maybe you're a healer or conscious coach or just someone that really, really wants to add goodness to the planet. And one of the most important things and ways to do that is by shifting your vibration, raising your consciousness, connecting into our heart intelligence, not just our head and our logic, but really, really understanding that information from the field, the unified field that we're all connected to, it's going to come through first through your heart, through heart intelligence. And that has been shown through so many, so much research through the HeartMath Institute, which I highly recommend you check out. It also is something that as you start to take note and track, keep an inventory of your life, just notice the difference when you have made decisions from logic, from what you thought was the right thing to do or what you should do versus what you felt in your body, in your gut, in your you know, in your solar plexus, in your, in your heart was right for you. They're two different things. And by the way, whenever we get that I should do something, that is always coming from ego and fear versus from our higher self, from your USGU. So we're going to talk about how do you really tap into your USGU? How do you decipher the signs, the, the nudges, the not so obvious little breadcrumbs that the divine, that the angelic and light realm are leaving for us. This is one of my favorite subjects. It's something that I have been observing and tracking almost since I started my business a decade ago. And one thing I noticed, and so I'm going to invite you to look in your life and notice, when do you feel like you are most receptive to either your intuition or signs from the divine or getting goosebumps? Like when do you notice that happens? For me, for example, when I'm driving, I think because I'm in a different brainwave state, my signs, like I would say 75% of the time come when I'm on the road. And I noticed this about 10, 11 years ago when I was making a major transition in my life between ending a marriage going back to get my master's degree, leaving my corporate day job, like a lot was happening. And I remember there was a morning where I just, I don't even know who I was talking to. I was talking probably, hopefully to my higher self, to the divine, to God. I just said, please give me a sign. 
and not realizing what I had just intended, I got in the road. I was heading all the way from Maryland to Virginia to go to this amazing personal growth program. It was a uh, retreat over the weekend. And I remember getting on the road and I just kept seeing like truck after truck with words that literally were exactly what I needed to make my decision, right? Like keep going, truth. I mean, it was just uncanny. And I remember this feeling, I had goosebumps and I was like, oh, I'm not alone here. I'm being communicated with. So I want you to think about, maybe it's for you on the road as well. Maybe when you walk your dog, when you're in nature, maybe they come to you through thoughts, through your dreams. For some, it might be really wise to keep a dream journal. Notice maybe you get some of your signs from your dreams. It could be when you are journaling. So for some, it's journaling or whatever that might be. But we all have different ways that this higher, beautiful, loving realm that's here to support us, you can call it the angelic realm, the light realm. This realm is here, I truly believe, to guide and support each and every one of us, not to mention your higher self, which really is the connection to your USU, your spirit guide who's with you. So there's so many ways to connect in, so many different ways, but I want to talk about the signs. So for me, as I was saying, when I was trying to decide what to do in my life, I was making this huge life decision. It was really scary. It brought up a lot of feelings of fear and worry and shame and like, what do I do? I was so just mired down in doubt and confusion. And this was really as I started to make this pivot into this work. And that's when I saw all of those trucks on the side of the road. The other signs I, I'm remembering and can share with you another way to ask for signs is those that those that have passed on, the the souls in your life, the maybe it's a parent or a grandparent or someone really close to you. If you heard my interview about two-ish years ago with Laura Lynn Jackson, who is a beautiful renowned medium. She wrote The Light Between Us and Signs. She's just fantastic. And we had a wonderful conversation and we talked about, and she talked about pick signs that are random for loved ones that have passed on that can communicate with you and don't make it necessarily obvious. So I'll share an example of this and then I'll bring this up to speed with what just happened recently and how I read the signs and how that helped me in my business to pivot, even when it seemed like things were all going totally haywire. So with this conversation with Laura, I remember I thought, okay, I'm going to do this with my grandfather. I didn't get to meet him, but I was born four days after his birthday. I was named after him. And I thought, okay, I want to have a sign with him. I just always have felt his energy. I can actually even feel it now as I'm, as I'm saying this, right? So I thought, okay, what would my grandfather, like what would be some random, random signs that I could create between us to communicate? So I thought, okay, one will be green apples. That's random, but I'll pick green apples. Why not? Green apples. And I thought, okay, zebras, like zebras are not pretty or not typical, right? You don't see zebras. So those are the two that I chose. And I remember this, I was um, listening to one of, one of Laura Lynn Jackson's interviews and talking about picking signs. This is actually, I think before I interviewed her and I was at the gym, I got into my car and I just remember thinking, like, Grandpa Jerry, I would love to feel like you're here, like I can connect with you, would love a sign. That would just really make me so happy and feel so connected. I kid you not, my friend, I got in the car. This is just like unbelievable. And I swear to you, I pulled out of the gym. This truck drove by. The only thing on the side was like a basket of probably 20 green apples. It was the whole side of the truck. I've only seen it one other time. And I remember I was like, whoa, okay, that is amazing. And I thought, okay, that's pretty cool. And then I kept driving. I pulled up to the stoplight. And before I was about to get onto the freeway, the car in front of me, I heard and felt this, this nudge to look up and look and see what, it, what was on the um, car, the back of the car. And on the back of the license plate, wow, 
That's interesting. My phone just went off with the national weather alarm, which is feels like another sign. <laughs> I get these alarms all the time like this when I'm talking about a loved one. There you go. There's my grandfather. To me, that feels like he's right here. And I see on the back of the license plate, it was his initials and the date that he transitioned, literally his initials and the date he transitioned. And I was crying. I was just crying. I, I have not met him, but I could feel him. And then to top it off the next day, I was driving from Maryland into DC, back to Virginia. And what did I see by the zoo, the national zoo? But I saw not one. They usually have all different animals, right, on the national zoo, kind of on those, um, like the signs that they have to show where the zoo is. They had this sign that had 12 zebras on it. So I saw it coming and going. This was within 24 hours. So this has been happening in so many different ways. I mean, I've got hundreds of stories like this. And the thing that really helps me in life, in business and making decisions and knowing like, A, I'm not alone and B, I'm supported and I want this for you as well. And you might already be doing this. But it really helps when you can start to track these signs and read them like a map, right? Like, like a signal reminding you, okay, you're not alone. You're supported. Loved ones are with you. You know, I've been doing a lot more diving into the spiritual deep end of the pool, mediumship channeling. I think I mentioned I studied mediumship with Suzanne Giesman, who's been on my show and it was so powerful. It was so beautiful. And I remember coming away from both of these, these trainings and, and beautiful weekends, and it was like, how is this happening? My brain couldn't understand it. How can I connect with all of these loved ones on the other side for people I don't even know? How is this possible? And what she talks about, and she talked about this in our interview, all of us, you, you and me, we all can connect in with these beautiful energies, these souls with the, the light, the angel realm, we can. Now it does mean raising your vibration. It does mean making sure that you're really connected to your heart. It's not about being perfect. It's not about always being positive. But I will tell you, learning to read the signs has helped me so much in feeling like there is this greater, beautiful guidance and power and, and helpers that are with me. And knowing that if anything comes up that feels worrisome or I'm feeling doubtful or not sure, that when, we, when you pause, when you learn to ask for sign and to read the signs, it can guide you to your answer. And this is what happened recently. So you may not know this. I have a whole background in coaching, health and wellness coaching. And I've been coaching as a spiritual life coach for for almost 15 years, I started a new, really powerful membership um, for light workers and also conscious coaches and for uh, spiritual seekers. So if that's you, I will have information about that. But you know, I have to say I was feeling a little nervous about it. I've had a membership just for coaches and I wanted to open it up. I wanted to have it for not just coach, conscious coaches, but also for seekers, for light workers, for change makers, for some, for people that may be doing other forms of um, being of service and making a bigger impact in the world, not just through coaching. And I got strong intuitive guidance on this one. I got strong intuitive guidance. I got so many signs that it's time to not only lead intuitive messages for people, but also to teach these intuitive tools that, and, and spiritual tools that I've been taught and that I've been using, including how to use a pendulum, how to muscle test, how to assess your energy and your chakras, how to use energy medicine tech, you know, techniques and practices, um, how to really shift your energy to be magnetic. All these things that I have learned either within my own self or in specific trainings or through people that I've interviewed or books I've read, so much information. I am a lifelong learner. If you're a Sagittarius like me, then <laughs> this is what we do. So I am starting this new membership, The Sanctuary, and I could feel, we're all energy, everything's energy. I could feel like, what is happening? I'm feeling nervous. Like I could feel it and started to wonder, 
you know, is this, it, I think underneath it was the like, oh my gosh, are people going to like this? Are they going to want this? Is, am I safe to do this? Whatever else other thoughts and worries came up. And all of a sudden, my friend, as I'm launching this, and this is like a couple weeks ago, this is real time, uh, my website crashed. Website crashed, the page crashed. Now, this has not happened to me before. I've been doing this work for over a decade. So I knew, I thought, okay, pay attention, Julie. Something is happening. It's mirroring me. Like truly, I believe that whatever's happening is a mirror for what's happening on the inside. So we, the, my amazing tech person, her website IP address was banned. We don't even understand why. Got it fixed. Happened again. I'm like, what is happening? This program feels so intuitively guided and I don't understand. And I started to look at, wait a minute, if everything is about my energy and it's mirroring that, and I really encourage you not from a place of condemning or judging yourself, but from just curiosity, like really take stock. If something is stuck or not happening or not flowing, look and see what are you, what's your energy? What are you saying to yourself? Right. And I have to say, cause I know this, I've seen it over and over again. Usually when I'm in alignment and flow, whatever I'm doing or sharing, it flows. So I knew this idea was something that was really intuitively guided. I got so many signs on the road. I can't even tell you before I made this decision to create the sanctuary. And in this case, and this happened a few days ago, while the site was down again, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we're sending, I'm sending emails. I'm talking about it. And I don't even know if people can sign up. What is going on? So I'm driving uh, to a yoga class, one of my favorite things to do to help me calm myself down. And I put on the radio, my car wasn't even picking up Spotify. It was so bizarre. All of a sudden, so I'm playing a song, Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. I'm like, okay, that's one of my songs. When I hear dreams, it reminds me to stay in my dreams. Okay, great. And then all of a sudden, another station comes in. It's this country song and it's like red flags and pay attention. And I'm like, what is going on? I mean, literally it was playing one song and then the other song and then the other like this has not happened before. So this is why I'm sharing this is what I realized is it, it was like this great big sign that went off in my mind's eye that said, pay attention, pay attention. Your energy is like these two signs. It's your foot is on the gas and your foot is on the brake. It's cross wires of energy and it's just energy. So you can change that. So I, you know, put my hand to my heart. I use some of my tapping practices, which you will soon learn in the interview to come soon with Donna Eden of Energy Eden Energy Medicine. And I'm tapping and I just finally, I don't know if you're like me, where you get to the point of just, all right, I surrender, like hands off the wheel. I was like, listen, all right, God, take the wheel. <laughs> just take it. I don't know what's happening, but I can't do anything about this. And I've done everything I can I can't change what's happening, but I can change my energy. And, you know, I was wondering, should this community, you know, should it just be something that has spiritual tools? Should it also be about how to manifest in your career? I mean, what should I, should I bring in some of what I've been teaching in my inner circle for conscious coaches? Like I just kept thinking it had to be either or. So I get to my yoga class. I'm about to leave. This just happened. And I have a picture, which I will, I will share um, in the description. I am waiting to leave the parking lot. And the next thing I know, they're, re, uh, they're redoing the entire parking lot. And they have their huge truck with the cement guys. And this truck is literally in front of the entrance. I cannot leave. It's there for five minutes. But guess what it said? on the truck. All that it said on the side was the word and. Now, I don't know if you know this, I wrote a book. It's called Get a PhD in You. And one of the chapters literally is about the power of the word and, right? Because what I had been doing, so here's what I realized. What I'd been doing was thinking, okay, my community that I'm creating that feels divinely inspired, it's either got to be this or that. And that was stressing me out. And I, I just like couldn't put it together in my head. And I was thinking, do I need to have two groups or what am I going to do? And all of a sudden I see the sign. I literally see the sign on the truck. It says, and, and it just sunk in. I'm like, it's, and it's both. And this new community is for both conscious coaches and light workers 
and spiritual seekers, and I can take what I've been teaching, and I can add new tools, and I can use my intuition and lead, you know, personal and collective messages, and it can be and. It doesn't have to be either or. So I hope this is helpful on a couple levels. I hope that perhaps if you've been struggling with something and it's like, I don't know, either this or that, maybe that message wasn't just for me because I had this feeling like I have to talk about this in this episode this week. So if you're struggling or wondering or worrying or doubting, just ask yourself, what would it look like if I brought in and? What if it was both and? What if it was something, it wasn't either or? What if it was a third option? Okay, so I want to share that. This is coming through to me intuitively right now. And I want to encourage you, my dear friend, to start really observing the signs, the signs in your life, the signs on the road, perhaps, the signs that you're getting in your body when you get those goosebumps or you feel like you're moving in and towards something, when you move, feel like you're moving away, when you get that just knowing or sense that you're supposed to do something. I just had this this morning. My very, very dear friend, Ashley, I went out to take a walk. I was walking later than usual. All of a sudden, I hear right away, call Ashley. And if you know me, I'm someone, although I would love to be a little bit more off the cuff and unplanned, I tend to be very planned because I have a full schedule. So for me to call randomly, that doesn't usually happen. But I called and something said, just wait, hold on, don't get off the line. She picked up the phone. This literally happened today. And she was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, hold on. I cannot believe you're on the phone. I was just talking about you with her other friend who I adore. So now she's like, I got to patch you in. I got to patch you in. We ended up having the three of us such a beautiful, powerful healing conversation that I had no idea was going to happen. But my higher self did. Her higher self did. My me me, right, did. And, and the divine did. It was a divine appointment. So we want to be here and free and ready and showing up for these divine appointments. And part of that is being able to read the signs, to listen, to know when something is tapping you on the shoulder, when there's a sign and you someone else might balk at it or laugh at it, but don't do that. Don't do that, my friend. Don't. Because if you feel any connection, we got to trust it. You got to build that faith muscle. The more, this is what I've seen, the more that you say, oh, that's a sign. I'm trusting it. I'm listening. I'm watching. I'm going to, I'm going to incorporate that into my life. The more they'll come. I, I get signs daily in all different ways. And it's one of the biggest gifts for me is knowing that I'm guided. And I want the same for you to know that you're guided. So I thought I would just pull a card and end with a little bit of intuitive guidance for fun. Um, I asked, I have like 40 decks, Oracle decks, um, and we're going to start with the animal spirit and animal spirit deck. So I'm just going to shuffle these. I'm just going to ask my beautiful team of light, my higher self, the great divine spirit of all of us to connect with each of your souls and to pull a card that's of the highest good for you, and for everybody who's tuning in. So let's see what we got here. This feels like the card. So what I'm doing is um, I'm just pulling the one. It's kind of lighting up in my field. And actually, this is something I'm going to be teaching is how to use Oracle cards, how to use a pendulum, how to um, channel, how to tune into your intuition. It's going to be awesome. Ooh, okay. So let's see what we got. we got here. So the card I chose, if you're watching um, on YouTube, you'll have the video, is bear, is bear. Let's see what we've got about bear. All right. So bear, oh my gosh, I almost turned right to it. So that sign with the upside down, here we go. Let me just tell you, is earth. This beautiful down uh, triangle, upside down triangle with the, with the um, line through it is earth. By the way, I want to share what's so cool. This is what happens when you start to trust your intuition and signs. I was drawing this symbol for like a year and had no idea why. I have a friend who's like, why do you keep drawing that? I'm like, I don't know. I'll put it in my, my notes, my journal. And I then got these cards. I just was so drawn to them. And I totally realized that I had been drawing the symbol for earth and realized that part of what I had needed was more earthing and grounding. I don't have any earth in my chart at all. So fascinating, right? Just so we are being guided at all times. You might be 
doodling something that ends up being like just what you need to hear. So I'm going to read to you what it says about Bear. Okay, gorgeous. Bear is waking from spiritual slumber, beginning anew. After a long winter, the bear arises from deep slumber. At first, the movement and effort are difficult, but the bear knows it's time to awaken and move toward the dawning light. The bear card represents an individual on the cusp of new directions and personal transformation. The initial weeks and months of the spiritual guest might feel tricky, cumbersome, and full of obstacles, but you have no choice. Bear, winter, Win bear, winter wanes, the warmth of spring emerges, and your transformation begins. When in balance, inner strength, yearning to grow. When out of balance, withdrawal, lethargy, and heaviness. To bring into balance, movement and exercise. I love that. So really, really trusting that awakening, that waking from that spiritual slumber. I will definitely be sure to put the link for these cards um, in the description um, and on YouTube. I'm also going to do a quick, 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 quick um, shuffling of my cards. These are the USU intention cards. I use these almost daily. And I, you know, creating them for myself, they have my energy and it just, they always feel very grounding for me. And I'll have the link in case you want to get some, your, get a deck yourself. Okay. So this card is lighting up. Let's see what we got. Oh, I love this one. What, what a great reminder. It's fun. All right. So if you're here, I know we're in a similar soul family. I often forget to have fun and get so serious, so serious about growth and learning and work and purpose. And like, let's lighten up, my friend. Let's lighten the F up, right? So this one is perfect. Fun. Intention. Life is meant to be fun. I allow myself to let go, look for ways to add in some fun and not take life so seriously. I'm excited to have more fun today. So here's just a quick question to ask yourself, when did I last experience something fun in my life? How can I add more of that or other fun experiences into my life now? So fun, we've got bear, that spiritual awakening, that really coming into that space of connecting to the, the divine realm. And then lastly, I was just at the Abraham Hicks workshop this past weekend. So I thought I would just pull a card from her deck, which is the Money and Law of Attraction. This deck spoke to me. And I want to remind you, it's funny, I, I love been listening to Abraham for years and years and years. And, you know, Esther who, er, Esther Hicks channels Abraham, this collective consciousness that is just, it, it just feels so aligned and brilliant. And I, I've gone many times. I love hearing them in person. And one of the things that I kept coming back to, it's like so simple, but do we do this, right? It's number one, she talked about, they talked about the importance of feeling good, setting the intention of feeling good, and the importance of following, following those breadcrumbs, following your intuition, following that, following the good feelings, right? So just a good reminder for you, hopefully, and for me. I'm going to just shuffle these and see what we get. I'll pick one card. See what we get from Abraham. All right. Here we go. So number 37, I can't tell stories of shortage and experience abundance. I love this one. Continuing to tell stories of shortage only continues to contradict your desire for abundance, and you cannot have it both ways. You cannot focus upon unwanted and receive wanted. You cannot focus upon stories about money that make you feel uncomfortable and allow into your experience what makes you feel comfortable. A different story will bring different results. My thoughts are the basis for the attraction of all things that I consider to be good, which includes enough money and health for my comfort and joy. It's beautiful. And this is exactly what I was saying earlier when I was talking about the cross wires. I had my foot on the gas and the brake. You can't do that and expect flow, abundance, right? Ease. And that's what I realized. I was driving, as I told you, into yoga, and then I saw the truck that said and, and I just really sat there and I recalibrated my energy and realized, you know what? This has been a divinely guided program and and, and endeavor. I, I feel like it came through me. I didn't really have, didn't feel like me, the little self me came up with the idea. So, and I love to say the divine is my employer. That's kind of works for me. 
And I just thought, well, if God's my employer and I'm being instructed that this is an and thing, that I can take what I've learned, I can add new things, it doesn't have to be separate. I just started to shift my energy and I started to tell a different story. And I started to ask myself, what if this is going to be such, such, what if this will bring in the perfect souls and, and that are exactly wanting what I'm offering? What if this is going to be easy? What if this might flow and my computer issues are going to be worked out in a way I don't understand? And I kid you not, I got home and they were basically all fixed. We did have to redo the website, which is not fun, right? And for the most part, it's it's been dealt with and the energy has shifted. And as I have beautiful souls joining, it just feels so much more flowing and, and of ease and aligned. And I keep turning this over and asking for the signs. And you can do this with anything. You can do this with anything. But I wanted to share real time. Like, honestly, this was so uncomfortable when it was happening. So uncomfortable. And I really feel you when or if you're dealing with something that's uncomfortable, that's upsetting, that, you know, your website crashes, there's a situation in your relationship, you got bad news. Like, it can be, it can feel really heavy. And I just hope that today's episode, solo sewed with, with me and you together, I hope that this helps you remember to pay attention to the signs, to ask for signs, to ask to be guided, to ask your USU, your higher self, to step in, to feel and sense and be with this presence, to take a moment in the morning like I did this morning and it really changed everything. And as you're breathing and maybe take a minute or two to meditate or a minute too longer or as you're walking in nature and just pause and ask, let me feel, just let me feel even a tiny aspect of how much I'm loved, how much you're loved, how much this love is breathing you and part of you and, and moving you and moving your heartbeat and and through all of your billions of cells, ask to feel that. Ask to be shown all day, as often as possible, signs that are going to help you, especially if you're in a tough moment, okay? And do not give up. Do not give up because I guarantee you those signs, those nudges that you are guided and loved absolutely are going to come in in the most miraculous ways. I have so many more stories about this. I could go on and on. Maybe I'll share more at another time, but I can tell you it's such, it's, it feels like magic, but it's really truly how the universe is set up. We are designed through love, by love, for love. And we are designed to not be alone and we're not alone. We have so much guidance. So remember to keep following those signals and signs, track them, make note of them. And if this is something you want more support with or help with, this is what we're going to be doing a lot of in my sanctuary membership. This is what we're going to be doing. If you are a light worker or a conscious coach or a spiritual seeker, or you just, this, this aligns for you or really feels like a soul nudge, come check it out. You can always try a month. You can leave, cancel at any time. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna be teaching you some of my favorite um, intuition tools and skills. I am gonna be leading intuitive messages with personal messages included, and there's a whole lot more um, that you will learn so that you can calibrate your energy. You can learn to be magnetic and manifest what you desire, and read the signs, and know how to set these intentions where what you're putting out there is happening and coming back to you. So if that's of interest make sure to check below or just go to, you can always go to my website, which is julieriesler.com slash sanctuary. Either way, my friend, I really hope that something in today's messages or this conversation about following the signs and paying attention and you're worth it, making time to do that and tracking it and noticing it and finding people that are safe to talk about it. How powerful it is to know that you are really truly being guided. You're never alone and you're being guided by a higher intelligence that is all love. That's my humble opinion either way. And of course, as always, take what you like and leave the rest. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave comments. We'd love to hear, is this resonating? What are some of your favorite signs that you've seen? How have they helped you in your life? Be in touch. I love connecting. This is a community. We are all here 
to raise consciousness first within ourselves, to raise our coherence between our heart and our brain, to raise our own energy and vibration. And I know if you're here that that is part of why you're on this planet. And from my heart to yours, so much love. So grateful to be here with you. Namaste, my friend. I will see you very soon.